Knowledge is power. Is that really true? We're fed with that as Swedes. Swedes love knowledge. Knowledge is great. But does knowledge mean power? Can you convince anyone with only knowledge? Can you make a better world with only knowledge? No, because it's not the thought that counts. You can believe and you can think how many smart thoughts that you ever want to, but only in combination with a conscious communication that could lead to power. So, communication is power. A good communication is power. And then you ask yourself, do we really want power? I would say, yes, we do. We do want power. Because power means how to influence people. And if you all here inside think that you have a good worldview, that you have, uh, they have a good way of thinking about humans and equal rights, of course you want to spread that word. Of course you want to influence people and use that power. And the only way to influence people is by a conscious communication and a good communication. And who is actually deciding what is a good communication and what is a bad communication? It's only your target group that can decide that. So the better you get to know your target group, the better you will be able to convince them about your own opinion. So how do you become good at something? You practice. And you practice conscious communication. And you're thinking about what signals do you send out all the time? How do you spread your word? And how do you speak up for these good causes? All right. How many thoughts do you think each day? Well, quite a lot. It's about 65,000 thoughts each day that you're thinking. Loads of thoughts, isn't it? But the most scary thing about that number is the next number. Because research has shown us that 95% of all the thoughts you're thinking today are exactly the same thoughts as you were thinking yesterday. That's how crazy we are, thinking outside the box. Yep. And, and though we're talking about that we love change, right? We love change. Change is a very modern word. Um, but still, we love and like to think and do the same things over and over again. And why do we love that? Because that saves us energy. It saves energy just to believe in the same things. And that's how the internet bubbles are created. Because we love to read about and write about things that we already believe in, also on the internet, right? All right. So um, why should we bother to speak up? Why should we bother to be against racism and sexism and homophobia and so on if people already have made up their minds? That's a good question. I usually say that we should speak up for many reasons, but one of the reasons is not to change your enemy. Maybe it's not to change all the marching Nazis the other day. It's to change the other ones, the ones who hasn't made up their mind yet, the ones who are still not, maybe they're not thinking about racism or sexism that much. They haven't made up their mind yet. So try to affect those people. That's why you should speak up. Also why you should speak up is because if you're quiet, that interprets as agreement. So what would that tell all the affected people, all the marginalized people out there, if you're quiet? So you have to speak up. All right. So when I say speak up, I would try to say communicate instead, because speaking is one thing that we do when we communicate. But if we want to see how we actually influence each other, we have to look at communication as a whole. And when you guys now are interpreting me and my communi communication, you are doing that on a basis of both how I say it and what I say. And most of us already know this, but about 80% of your interpretation of me and my communication is based on the how. How I communicate my message, how I look, how I use my gestures, how I use my facial expressions and my voice. And only 20% are the exact words I use. But aren't the words very important? Don't we have to say the correct things? Of course we have to. They're so important that they have to be lifted up by our how in order to make a 100% impression. So you have to lift up your what with your how. And what do I mean with that? Well, you want to 
sort of make yourself a little bit bigger. So use your gestures that you usually do, but make them bigger. Enhance yourself, enhance your how. Use your facial expressions, but show a bit more, just in order to influence people more. Also use your voice, but try to find your variation a bit more. As soon as communication gets monotonous, people will fall asleep, right? You've all fell asleep in, in meetings and presentations, or at least, you know, changed channels here inside. You know, start thinking about um, children or the car or whatever. Uh, but with a real variation in your communication, people will stay awake. And that's a great thing when you want to influence them. So, uh, try to enhance yourself. Be yourself. Why are you supposed to be yourself? Everyone else is already taken. Right? So just go on, be yourself. But try to be yourself 2.0, to upgrade yourself, be a little bit more of yourself in order to influence people more with these good causes. All right, that is what and how. Now we use that what and how, and we uh, build that upon our three ground pillars when we try to convince people. The first ground pillar is logic and facts. Logic and facts. Where you're supposed to uh, be very clear in your arguments. You're supposed to show your target groups that one plus one is two, or rather one plus one, and your target group gets to say, oh, well, there have to be two. And you say, wow, you're so smart. That's good. That's good communication. OK, so how to become more clear? Well, um, shorten your message. It's easy to talk for a long time about something that's really close to you, right? You can talk as long as, you know, ever. So shorten your message to become clearer. And also, simplify your language. Try to use words and a language that the target group understands. Some people, you've already met them, they think that they're really cool when they use very, very difficult terms, right? Oh my god, I have a jacket on and I'm very cool. I might be a manager as well. You met them? <laughs> yep, I have. Uh, it's not that cool to use difficult, uh, difficult terms because your target group will not understand. And it's not possible to get convinced by something I don't understand. So speak simply. Simple words. Simplify everything. Just as Hans Rosling. Simplify. And also explain. If you need to use a term that is difficult, try to explain what it means. And when I say simplify and explain, people would tell me, well, don't people ask if they don't understand? Do people ask if they don't understand? No, they don't. They pretend that they understand. They say like, oh, of course I know that. Oh, oh. And they're like inside, oh my god, I don't know. They pretend that they understand. The best people in the world, they do ask children, right? Because they're best. They're like, I don't understand. It's, oh, great that you're telling me. Now I have another chance. But grown-ups don't ask. OK, so simplify and explain. Also, we have to be very uh, concerned about that all the logic arguments have to be adapted to your target group. So you have to use the right arguments to your target group. And that could be totally different arguments that, than you actually like. So if you want to talk about recruitment, uh, we, should, uh, we should recruit from a broader space. We should recruit from all cultures, for example. Maybe to you, it's about human rights or it's about justice. But maybe a better argument for this business leader would be capitalism or try to mirror the market better. It doesn't matter on what basis as long as they stand up for the right things. All right. So, the logic and facts are very important. And still we can see all these fake news, all these alternative facts just flourishing on the internet and everywhere. Why? Well, I think one answer to that question is that logic arguments should be both sustainable and relevant to the target group. Sustainable and relevant. Um, sustainable is easy to prove. Evidence, easy to prove. Relevant, it have to have to drive me. I have to feel like it's it's important to me. Okay, what we can see is that if something is very relevant to me, I don't seem to question the sustainability of the argument. So if it's very relevant to my views of today, I don't seem to question it. Are you with me? 
So therefore, these internet bubbles get to grow. Also, we have the anecdotal evidence chains, where we put one person and let him or her be representing a whole group. I met one immigrant. He or she did this bad thing. Well, immigrants are bad. That is anecdotal ev evidence chains. It's not sustainable. They're just relevant to some of these target groups. So you have to be aware of your own facts that you're using, that they are both sustainable and relevant. All right. Then we have the authority and credibility that are also very important. That is that you and your message will always be connected. So what you're saying will be measured upon how you are perceived as the person. Okay. So my credibility is very important here. So that's uh, so one thing that you have to do is you have to lift yourself up a little bit. Because no one will listen to you if you're like, well, I have a small point. <laughs> Maybe we should lift yourself up, but do it in a humble way. Because no one either wants to listen to someone who comes from above and tells you this is how you have to do it, because I'm the expert. So you have to find that, that balance between being an expert and also being humble about that. Uh, so lift your own experience up, but try to be perceived as a good guy. And how are, you, how are you going to do that? Well, what do we like in people? We like when people show interest in ourselves, don't we? So if you want to be perceived as a good guy, show interest in the people you meet. Ask them questions. Um, try to, to really see them as people. Then you don't have to agree with what they say, but start out with showing interest for them. Ask them questions and listen actively. And when you do that, you're building your credibility. And after that, you can start to influence them in order to speak up against racism. All right, you can also borrow authority from institutions, from research, uh, from real facts, not fake news, uh, or from people that you know that your target groups looks up to. So borrow those authorities that you know that your target groups looks up to. That's really effective. Then we have feeling. Feelings and passion. Feelings and passion. Why is that so important? Well, at least 85% of all the decisions we're making are based upon a feeling. We think that we're very rational, right? That we're very logic and, uh, you know, uh, pros and cons and blah de blah de but we do, we're more, 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 far more emotional. So 85% of all the decisions are based upon a feeling. So that's why you are supposed to think, what feeling am I supposed to create in my target group in order to make them feel and do the same thing as I do. And I have seen that from both sides, both you know, racists and anti-racists, and sexists and anti-sexists, and so on, I've seen the threatening rhetorics that it has been flourishing, the threatening and fear storytelling. If we don't do this, this bad will happen. If we don't do that, that will happen. If we don't integrate our new Swedes, this will happen. If we do integrate them, this will happen. Okay, I think it's time to spread another kind of feeling. The feeling of positivism. The feeling of we can change, we can make a change. Because we have so many good examples of that. So instead of, peop instead of uh, speaking of what will happen if we don't, try to show the positive effect. When we do this and that, this will happen. When we integrate our new suites in a better way, we will. And please try to find all these good examples and talk about them, because that will make people find their hope and find their will to speak up and change more things. These three components are so important. Logic, authority, and feeling. And that together with a positive mind and with your what and your how to really influence the people you meet. The ones who hadn't made up their mind up yet and the ones who are affected by all these bad isms out there. Speak up for them and make yourself heard.